This is the Leopard 1 Armoured Recovery Vehicle or the Burger Panzer 2 Standard. This vehicle went into design in 1962 by Porsche. From 1966, they went into production by a company called Atlas Mac, who were also previously taken over by Krupp in 1964. From there, they built the first 444 of these vehicles. This is an Italian operated AV. However, the first batch that was sent to Italy were from Germany and then the Italians built them under license. The vehicle itself has about 75% comparable parts to the Leopard 1 main battle tank. All the running gear is essentially the same. The engine is the same. We have all the equipment here to be able to necessitate recovery of a broken down vehicle. So this cable is about 32 millimeters in diameter. It's about 90 meters long and this has a standard pull of about 35 ton. We have a pulley that can double that pulling strength to about 70 ton. We've got the blade so this is used in both stability to use the boom but also earthworks. This is the pulley that I mentioned that we use in conjunction with the main winch and this when we run the winch out and come back. We use this towing eye here as the anchor point. Across the front, we have the machine gun ball mount. So this is where we fit the uh, MG3, and this has a 30 degree arc. The main entry door into the vehicle. This also has a fold down seat for a, uh, an additional crew member, and this crew member can operate the MG3 machine gun. Lifting equipment on the side, deck sling. So we can actually lift the engine decks off a, uh, a vehicle and another door here where we hold CES complete equipment schedule. Along with most other tanks, these are called pioneer tools. So these allow you to either dig or cut your way out of a uh, predicament. We're at the rear of the vehicle. So in particular, we're gonna look at the A-frame here. We can hold two A-frames uh, on this vehicle and it's got a, a mount here. When we have two A-frames, we can unwind it from this first lot of threads and go to the second lot of threads and it'll just push up and clamp the two together. We have the track adjustment tool, which obviously adjusts the track from the front of the vehicle. As we do track adjustment, have a string line, go from the one guide roller to the uh, next guide roller, and we pick the middle end connector. If we can fit a pen, generally about five mil, in between there, we know our track tension is correct. This uh, boom or crane can hold a maximum of 20 tonne. Got a free floating swivel. So as the boom comes up, this is, lets us know how much we can actually lift at that particular height. Now this boom has a swivel of about 270 degrees. When we get up to our heavier weights, that's when we employ the blade. We lower it down, we lift the vehicle off the ground just slightly, and that gives us stability. When we go to about five meters out the front of the vehicle from center, we can lift five ton at about five meters uh, away from the vehicle, but that only gives us about 200 degrees of motion. If we go to about 13 ton and about three meters out from the vehicle, so we're talking about the end of the boom out from here and straight down. We can lift around about that 13 ton mark, but if we want to lift 20 ton, we've got to have the boom literally straight out in front, so zero degrees, with the blade down and we can lift 20 ton. Under these protective covers under here, there's two large hydraulic cylinders which provides all the hydraulic power to lift the crane up and down. If at any stage we lose hydraulic pressure, and we can't move the boom around. There is a process where they can release the oil from the hydraulics. And behind this cover just here, there's a tool that will fit in there that can allow the crew to manually move the crane back around to its stowed position. I'm sitting in the driver's position. So as I said, most of the components are comparable to the Leopard gun tank. The steering yoke gives us two steering pressures, handbrakes, our driver's console, obviously uh, where we start the vehicle up as well. Our gear select, so we can go into forward, neutral, reverse and pivot. And we have our four speeds in forward and two in reverse. This is where the operator, the driver, also controls the blade and the crane from his position. So the seat will come up and he can operate all the external features of this vehicle from the driver's position. At the rear, in this position here, is where the commander would sit. Australian Leopard Arv crews had the uh, driver and the commander. From here, he's also got a, uh, an MG3 that can sit up top on his compiler. He could also activate the smoke grenade discharges. There's a seat at the rear that allowed for another operator. So it, it does fit four people quite comfortably. So as I said, we operated with uh, a two-man crew. So we can see that the actual engine deck is completely flat where if we look over there on the uh, Leopard gun tank, the uh, front part of the deck is angled down. Because this is, the engine deck is higher, it allows us also to carry more fuel. 
So on a Leopard gun tank, we hold 985 litres. On this one, we hold 1,410 litres, a range of over 800 kilometres on road. On the back deck here, because it is flat, in these uh, points here and one on the, the other side here, we can actually put a pack sled where we can actually fit another Leopard engine in this position here. So quite a versatile uh, bit of kit. So when the boom comes up, you can actually swivel around, pick up the, uh, the engine with a pack sling and then lift it off all the way around, ready to uh, replace into a, another Leopard. When I was in First Army Regiment, these were a godsend. They were an excellent recovery vehicle. When we went from Leopard to Abrams, I just don't know why they didn't keep these as a second line support vehicle, because they were so versatile. We could have used all the uh, remaining running gear and engines from the other Leopards to keep this one running. So I thought that, you know, this would have been an excellent vehicle to keep on hand. You can see this one in action uh, at the back for Ozama Fest, so 23rd to 25th of August uh, this year. Hopefully we won't have to use it, but just in case we do have a breakdown, this vehicle is more than capable of towing any vehicle that we have within the museum.